A sobering statistic, one in every six Americans suffers from chronic kidney disease. Lori Hartwell has received four kidney transplants, and she's president of the Renal Support Network. And Lori, really, you are a walking miracle. Yes, I am. Thank you for helping tell the story. It's, it's just so happy to be here today. Well, off the bat, tell us your story, Lori. Well, I was diagnosed at age two with at kidney failure back in 1968. So when people hear four transplants, I've lived 43 years with this illness. So, um, yeah, it was caused from the E. coli bacteria. Um, I had kidney problems that caused high blood pressure. Uh, I was on dialysis from age 12 to 24 for 12 years of my life, all my teenage years. And, um, you know, I basically started my organization, Renal Support Network, so I could help other people who are living with chronic kidney disease that, you know, you can have a joyful life in spite of this illness. And Well, tell us about this illness. What is it exactly? Well, basically, you know, nobody really, they take your, you take your kidneys for granted. And, you know, the kidneys do so much. They're the master chemists of your body. And the two number one causes of kidney failure are high blood pressure and diabetes. And, you know, high blood pressure, you don't feel it. I mean, you know, and so people don't take their meds. And I always encourage everybody to buy one of those little blood pressure cuffs mm -hmm. and take everybody's blood pressure in your family. And if there's any problems, you know, you know, talk to your doctor, get medication, because that pressure in your kidneys scars them and causes them to fail. And the number one cause of kidney failure is diabetes, because if you have uncontrolled blood sugar, that's hard on your kidneys. So do, do, you, do you ask your doctor, or you know, if, if they're not looking, do you ask them to, to, to do certain tests to monitor you if you're at, in, in an at-risk group? Yes. Um, if you're at at-risk or anybody, I just say, you know what, ask them what your GFR is, your glumenal filtration rate, GFR. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always tell people is don't trust your doctor to always manage you. Always ask for a copy of your labs. You know, if you see something out of range, ask them about it. Because doctors are busy and, you know, some things fall through the cracks. So I always say if you have high blood pressure, you're diabetes, or if you have diabetes, or if you're African American or Hispanic, you're, you're more at risk. For these things. For these now, things. Now, you know, you say you're at risk. Is this a hereditary trait? Is it a lifestyle thing? You said you're two years old. E. coli poisoning yes. is what started your yes. renal failure. I'm, you know, it's not a really a main cause. What You know, I'm kind of a little bit out of the box. But right. there are some hereditary illnesses like polycystic kidney disease where you have tumors growing on your kidney, that's hereditary. Uh, you know, there's some, you know, other types of IgA nephropathy. It's, it's, it's conditions that cause it. It's, a, it's an illness. But the two number one causes of kidney failure in this country are high blood pressure and diabetes. And anybody can do something about those two issues. All right. What do we look for as far as warning signs? Well, there's, you know, the warning signs is you can, you know, you can have headaches, you can, you know, bloat, you can retain fluid, you can itch. We have a great um, you can video. Itch. You can itch because when your kidneys are failing, you, you, your phosphorus increases and your phosphorus is a mineral that gets huh. in your skin. It makes you itch. Um, but I don't want anybody to get those symptoms. You need to prevent them. Right. And, you know, we on our website, um, rsnhope.org, we have a great video and information about what are the warning signs. But if you have high blood pressure and you have um, a high blood sugar level, or pro those are the two number one, you know, warning signs that you are at risk for kidney disease. Tell me more about your group. Well, my group, I started in 1993. It's Renal Support Network. We're an organization. We're nationwide. We have resources on, on our website. You can call and talk to another patient. If you just diagnose and you don't know what to ask, we're like a support group. It can be group. so scary, Lori. It, it is. You know, you, and it's you don't so know what nice. to do. Well, and to have something like, you know, somebody like you who's been through this, yes. you know, be there to walk you through this really dark and scary moment so you're not alone. Well, my key phrase is an illness is too demanding when you don't have hope. And if you don't have hope, you don't, you know, you don't make the appointments. You don't go to the doctor. You don't try to change your diet because, you know, when you have kidney disease, you have a diet you have to follow or kidney failure, I should say. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, getting on the list, if you have kidney failure, you're on dialysis, how do you go about getting on the list? How to be your own advocate? So through the Renal Support Network, I really try to help that peer support. Me and many people, you know, help me with this. And we just try, try to help them understand that you can get through this. You can have a joyful life in spite of having an illness. You know, I have to tell you, I think a lot of people are, are, are scared to hear the outcome. They don't want to know. Yep. You know what? It's like the, what is it? The, if you're under the covers, nobody sees me. Right, but, right. you know, denial is an empowerful emotion. 
but denial does not make you well. It's like facing it all. What can I do, you know, to help get through this? And that's what we try to do with the peer support. Gotcha. Or a family member calls and my husband's by diagnosed. I don't know what to do. Right. And we try to give them the tools and some motivation and, you know, we need to make an appointment. This is what you have to ask. Just those little things to get them to the next milestone because you can't. I've lived with this illness for 43 years. I received a kidney a year ago from my stepsister. This wow. is the first time in my life my labs have all been in normal range. Well, no high blood pressure, Lord, nothing, so there's been, hope. That's fantastic. Um, very quickly, how can people get a hold of you? Well, we have a website. It's rsnhope.org. It's Renal Support Network. Um, you can go to our website. You can get all kinds of information. You can connect into, you know, peers. And, you know, you can get inspired and learn how to live with this illness and still and have a great life. That's the key. Living with the illness and, and having a great life. Yes, all live right. the life you were meant to live. Well,